Today I'm gonna to give you five things that you can do if you have ever doubted, not necessarily if God exists, but if you've ever doubted whether God is good and whether Christianity is the right religion and the only way to get to God. That's coming up next on The Beat. Hey my friend, welcome to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new, consider subscribing. So today we're dealing with a very, very practical question, right? What do you do whenever you start to doubt your faith, your own Christian faith? Well, I wanna jump into a story in Matthew chapter 11 about about a man named John the Baptist, and I'm gonna give you five things that I want to encourage you to do if you ever start doubting your faith. Beginning in verse two, it says, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things that the Messiah was doing, so he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? Wait, is this the same John the Baptist that spent his life preaching and telling everyone else about Jesus and now he is doubting whether Jesus is who he says he is? Is this not the same John the Baptist that baptized Jesus Christ himself in the Jordan River and now he's having doubts? Well, in order to understand this, you actually have to go forward to Matthew chapter 14, verses three through five, and if you read that later, you will see that John the Baptist is now sitting in prison because he called out King Herod for having an adulterous affair with his brother's wife. He was like, hey man, you can't sleep with your brother's wife. That's not right. And so Herod put him in prison. And now John the Baptist is looking at a situation. He's saying, you know what? How can I be called to preach when I'm sitting here in prison? So Jesus, are you really who you say you are or should we be looking for someone else? John the Baptist was having doubts about who Jesus was. And so the first thing that I want to encourage you to do if you've ever doubted or if you ever find yourself doubting in the future is this. Never base your beliefs on your circumstances. So John was looking at his circumstance and say, you know what, because I'm in prison for preaching the gospel and doing the right thing, then that means therefore I conclude that Jesus must not be who he says he is. If you consistently look at your surroundings, your circumstances, and your experiences to base your beliefs off of that, my friend, you will always continue to struggle and doubt your faith. The second thing that I want to encourage you to do is whenever you doubt, I want you to turn towards Jesus Christ rather than away. Notice what it says here in verse two. Once again, it says that John sent his disciples to ask Jesus. So instead of just assuming that Jesus Christ was not who he says he was, instead John says, you know what? I'm not going to turn away from Jesus. I'm going to turn towards Jesus to see if I can get some clarity on the doubts that I'm having. This is where many, many Christians miss it because whenever they have doubts, they turn away from Christianity, they turn away from Jesus rather than turning towards him. So I want you to notice something very, very important here. Notice how Jesus responded to John's doubts. Instead of condemning him and saying, you know what, John, how could you doubt me after all that you've seen and all that you know about me? Instead, Jesus met John right where he was. And so if you are struggling in your faith today and you're doubting God, doubting Jesus, doubting Christianity, don't think that Jesus is condemning you. Instead, Jesus is going to meet you right where you are if and only if you turn towards him and not turn away from him. Doubt in and of itself is not necessarily a negative thing if it propels you into a deeper level of seeking God and oftentimes it can actually strengthen your faith rather than weaken it. Number three, pay attention to the evidence. I want you to notice what Jesus says here in response to John's doubts. It says in verse four, Jesus told them, talk, speaking of John's disciples, go back to John and tell him, what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. Do you know what Jesus was saying here? He was saying, John, if you are doubting, just look at the facts, look at the evidence, look at the things that I've done, and if you really pay attention to those things, you will see that I am who I say I am. And so if you are doubting, look at the Bible and how it was written by God and not by man, it doesn't have any errors in it, and yet it's 
filled with all this prophecy that only a God could write. Look at the lives that were changed. Look at the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. All of these things are things that only God can do. And Jesus is saying, John, you know what? If you're doubting, look at the evidence, look at the things that I'm doing and let that restore your faith. The fourth thing that I wanna encourage you to do if you're doubting your faith is not to condemn yourself and to remind you that you are in good company. Notice what Jesus says here in verse 11. He says, I tell you the truth of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. Do you know what Jesus is trying to remind us here? He's saying, you know what? Even the greatest Christians, the greatest saints of all times are going to have times and seasons in their lives where they're going to experience doubt. He says, there is no one who has ever been born that is greater than John the Baptist, and yet he experienced doubt. We know that Jesus, right before he went to the cross, he said, God, why would you forsake me? Then we also know in the Old Testament, King David said in Psalm 13, Oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? Let me encourage you today that if you're struggling with doubt, you are not alone. And number five, I want you to accept the fact that not all of your questions are going to get answered. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things of the Lord belong to the Lord. In other words, if you are waiting to get all of your questions answered before you truly give yourself to God and place your faith in Jesus Christ, my friend, you're never going to truly experience faith. If you had every single question that you've ever wanted to know about God answered, then guess what? That would make you God and not not him because you would know just as much as he would. To think that our finite minds are able to comprehend an infinite God is certainly having an unrealistic expectation. So I want to encourage you to get used to living in the mystery of God's sovereignty. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.